So we now have Illuminor Zerus's new rules. The good, the bad and the ugly. It's coming right up. Necrons! Nick speaking and welcome to this video. And if you're new to the channel and you want to learn about Necrons and more, then please subscribe and hit the bell button to turn on all notifications so you don't miss an upload. Okay, so let's start with the ugly because, well, to be honest with you, I was a bit disappointed with all of the uh, comments that I saw around when the rules for Illuminor was leaked. Comments like, that psychic weapon is trash. He is just trash. He's not really good at anything. Feel he costs more with a nerf. Total hot garbage. Very underwhelming in my eyes. Now you can imagine when I saw all of these comments, I thought to myself, oh my God, what have Games Workshop done with Illuminor? Why is he so bad? And it wasn't until I got home and I looked at the data card for myself uh, to make up my own mind about his stats that I thought, well, actually, I think he's pretty good. But before we talk about the good, I want to talk about the bad. Now, I think the main reason why we get quite a few negative comments when rules are released is because people have, well, different expectations of what their models should be. After all, we're getting a brand new, very big Illuminor model made of plastic to replace a very small little fine cast model. So it's a big model, it's a brand new release, and well, we want some really good rules. However, what you have to consider is Illuminor himself. I mean, his current rule set and the points cost that he is. I mean, Illuminor has never been one of the big players in our codex. And just because he's getting a new model doesn't mean he's going to go up the ladder and be the most powerful Necron character we've ever had. This is just a new sculpt, which I'm sure we're eventually going to get all the fine cast models re-sculpted. It's a bigger model for sure. However, that doesn't dictate that it's gonna have bigger rules. And I think that is where the issue comes in, where people are disappointed with the rules because, well, their expectations are higher than they maybe should be. Okay, so with all that said and done, let's have a look at the data. Children making noise. It's only going to the toilet. Okay, so with all that said and done, let's have a look at the good. Let's have a look at the data card. Okay, so first of all is his points. So he's now 130 points. He's gone up 20 points. However, everything in 9th edition is going up in points. And we can only assume this is his 9th edition points. So in the great scheme of things, a points increase, well, we almost were expecting that. Illuminor has gained two inches on his movement, now moving eight inches. His strength and toughness have both gone up from four to six. Plus he's had a wound increase from five wounds to seven wounds. So for just 20 points more, even from the old points cost of this model, well, he's got quite a big boost in a number of areas. He still has his Aldridge Lance, more on that in a minute, and he has his Impaling Legs. That's a new thing for Illuminor. Now his Lance has changed dramatically in range. It's gone from 36 inches to 18 inches, and I can see how that has upset a lot of people. After all, it's great to have Illuminor sitting at the back, potentially buffing your warriors and immortals, and then using the lance each turn to shoot. However, the lance has increased to D3 shots as opposed to one, 
even though it is shorter. And we know that 9th edition is going to be a totally different game to what we currently know. It's going to be smaller tables, it's going to be more assault based, more close combat based. And I'm sure that even though it's only 18 inches, we're going to have plenty of opportunity to shoot it in 9th edition. And of course we get D3 shots as opposed to 1. The rest of the stats are the same. Strength 8, minus 4 AP, D6 damage. And whilst I can see that you could say you're paying more points and he's been nerfed, on the flip side, we don't really know what 9th edition is going to offer. And actually that's 18 inches, more shots, potentially more shots, it is random, may actually be very useful. Especially if we're going to play Illuminor in a different way than we were, which we're going to talk more about, of course, in a minute. Now, talking of melee in 9th edition, the Aldridge Lance has better melee stats now. So it used to be strength 4, minus 2, and 1 damage. And now it's strength 7, minus 3, and does 2 damage. Now, for the times that we don't need that multiple damage, we've also got our impaling limbs. This is a new thing for Illuminor. So this is strength 6. It's minus 2 with one damage. However, you get an extra two attacks. So that's six attacks rather than four. So Luminor in combat is pretty versatile, whether you're up against a lot of units with just one wound or maybe a tank or a monster or some Primaris Marines with more than one wound. So I'm liking that. It's great to have the choice of weapon. Now he still has his living metal and he's a master technomancer which means he can give RP bonuses to units within three inches that have the keyword necrons. Unlike a crypt tech can only do it on units which have the infantry dynasty keywords. So Illuminor can actually help buff quite a few units that maybe a crypt tech can't. Especially useful if you're playing mixed dynasties. He still has his mechanical augmentation, which I know some people aren't very happy about. They're saying, oh, it's just a copy and a paste because it's exactly the same rule. However, yeah, plus one to strength, plus one to toughness, or plus one to hit. You can give this to a Necron unit, Immortals and Warriors, and once you give it to them, it lasts the whole of the game, and then the next turn you can give it to another Necron unit, Immortals and Warriors. Albeit, of course, it is random, and of course, well, plus one to strength isn't amazing for a Necron unit. Immortals and Warriors. However, it could be useful, especially when we've got a new special rule called, or what's it called? It's called... Automatic Energy Manipulator. So basically, if Illuminor kills a model in the fight phase, at the end of the fight phase, he gets to do another mechanical augmentation role. Of course, he can't put the same role on the same unit. It's got to be a different unit. And of course, it is circumstantial. But imagine this scenario. You deploy and your opponent seizes the initiative or he has a very good first turn shooting phase, opening up a gap for Illuminor to be assaulted. Illuminor gets assaulted, and in that assault phase, he kills someone. Well, now he has the option to buff one of the warrior or immortal units that's around him, and then at the beginning of your turn, you can buff the other unit. So all of a sudden, you've got two buffed units ready to go. Circumstantial, but, well, nothing to be sniffed at. And then finally we've got, well, the Psychic Awakening, Psychic Ability, which apparently every army was getting. Now our Illuminor has Empiric something. What's it called? Talk too long, I forget. Empiric Overcharge. And then we've got a new rule, Empiric Overcharge, which is a nine inch range. Enemy Psychers, when they do a test within nine inches of Illuminor, will take a Perils of the Warp if they roll a double regardless of what double it is. Not amazing, but, well, a nice thing to have. And looking at these rules, I think we will be playing Illuminor in a different way. I think we will be getting him closer than maybe we previously were. 
Now, yes, he doesn't have an invulnerable save. However, he can take Cryptothrolls, the new unit that's coming for us as well. And I think Illuminor with Cryptothrolls, well, that gives him an extra edge. And overall, for the points, I think actually we've got a lot of buffs. Like I said, maybe the expectations of we've got a new big Illuminor model, he's going to be beast. Well, Illuminor's never really been the beast unit amongst our HQs. However, he's got some cool, fun, nice tricks, which I think will actually bring quite a lot to our armies. Now, I mentioned about Cryptothrolls being a key thing for Illuminor, and I actually made a video all about the new Cryptothrol rules. So, I'll link you up to that video just there, and here's a playlist of all of my 9th edition Necron videos. Beam me up!